Have you ever gone outside, looked at the night sky, and see this little cloudy spot that looks hazy, but sometimes when you look at it, it comes into sharper view? I've had this experience many times, especially with looking at the Pleiades. And I learned about a technique that stargazers can use in order to better see these types of celestial objects, and it's called averted vision. Averted vision is a technique used in observational astronomy to enhance the visibility of faint objects. This could either be a dim star or maybe a galaxy or a star cluster. This technique is taking advantage of where the light sensitive cells are located in the human eye. In this video, we will examine the structure of the human eye, the function of the two types of cells that detect color and light, and identify the best celestial objects that you can practice this technique with. Welcome to Learn the Sky. My name is Janine, and I'll be your guide as we explore the night sky one constellation at a time. Now let's take a look at the structure of the human eye in order to understand how averted vision works. You have two types of cells inside of your eye. The first is called the cone cell, and these are your color detecting cells. And they are highly concentrated in the back center of the human retina. And these cells are really responsible for that sharp, detailed vision that you can have in bright light, as well as color vision. But this area of the eye is not particularly particularly sensitive to light. In terms of light, we use rod cells, and these cells are concentrated more on the side of the eyes right here, and these areas are very sensitive when they're in low light levels, but it doesn't really allow the eye to see color. So when you're looking at an astronomical object that's far away, what you want to do is look to the side of the object. This way, you're activating these cells, the rod cells, that are detecting light. So just to put this together, you have two different types of cells. You have cone cells that are concentrated in the center of the retina, and then rod cells which are concentrated on the side of the eye. It is important to note that averted vision only works when you give your eyes enough time to adjust. Typically, it takes between 20 to 30 minutes for your eyes to adjust through a process called dark adaptation. There are some factors that influence this, such as age, overall eye health, and the intensity of previous light exposure. So why does it take this long? It's because of this molecule right here. This is a protein called rhodopsin, and it's a light-sensitive protein that's found in the rod cells of the retina in the human eye, as well as many other animals. And when a photon of light strikes the rod cells, the rhodopsin becomes activated and allows the eye to perceive objects in low light conditions. Another thing that's important to acknowledge with averted vision is making sure you maintain your night vision. So using red light is very important because it has the least effect on dark adaptation. The human eye is less sensitive to red wavelengths. So using red light is something that's very common when you go out to stargazing star parties. And here, what I do for my red light is I usually find a flashlight that I may already have um, and I paint it with red nail polish. So again, averted vision is something that takes time and practice patience, but you also need the right conditions. To use averted vision, astronomers deliberately look to the side of an object they want to observe. By doing this, the faint light from the object is hitting the more light-sensitive rods that are on the side of the retina. So, which objects could you look at in order to practice this technique? I came up with three objects that you can focus on. The Pleiades star cluster, Orion's nebula, and the Andromeda galaxy, all three of which are in this photo that is pictured right here. So first, my eye is drawn right here. That's the Pleiades. And I have a whole video that goes in depth about this star cluster. So if you want to learn more, go see that video. But here's the Pleiades. Right here is Orion's nebula. And then the Andromeda galaxy is right here. And this is a great photo because you can see all of those. And actually, you can see zodiacal light coming off kind of in this cone shape 
off the horizon here. And I do have a video about what zodiacal light is, so go see that if you want to learn more. So the Pleiades star cluster, that's an object you can focus on. Messier 42, which is Orion's nebula, and Messier 31, which is Andromeda's galaxy. Let's get a little bit more practice looking at some photos so you can start to learn how to identify these objects. So there are two objects that I mentioned. The Pleiades, which is all the way to the right side towards the bottom of the photo, and then you have Orion's Nebula, which is more towards the left side. Here is where the Pleiades are. To me, that's the most recognizable star cluster to most people. And then over in this region is where Orion's Nebula is. Now, it doesn't really show up as well as, say, this photo, but it does give you an idea of where it is, and it's right beneath the belt stars. Let's get another practice photo. Here we have Taurus, and hopefully your eye is drawn to the Pleiades star cluster right here. And here's another photo. Here we have Orion towards the right side. Here's Orion. Here are the belt stars, and Orion's nebula is right here. So when you're looking at this object in the night sky, you want to look to the side of the object. And then again, that light is going to hit the side of your eye that is able to detect light in low level conditions. The trade-off is you you kind of lose that sharp focus, but again, just a technique for you to practice. I've got one more photo here. So here, I love this photo because it shows you Andromeda in the background, and this is Andromeda Galaxy. So when I go outside to see this this celestial object. You really need dark skies, and it's helpful just to look to the side of the object, not directly at it. And what you see is it'll start to come into focus a little bit more because you're activating those rod cells. As I was making this video and talking about the structure of the human eye, I was reminded that there are objects in space that really look like human eyes. And I know I'm not alone in thinking this. Our human eyes are very limited. So as I was making this video, I just felt very thankful for those artificial eyes that are out there that are able to see the things that human eyes cannot. So let me know in the comments below, have you used this averted vision stargazing technique? And if so, which objects have you practiced with in the night sky? Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to stargaze. So take a friend with you, give your eyes time to adjust to the darkness, and get comfortable. I always feel like spending time in nature is the universal reset button for everybody. So thank you so much for being here and for watching. And as always, keep looking up.